जय राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंजा बिहारी गोपी जन वाला गिरीवर धारे गोपी जन वाला गिरीवर धारे Shodanandana Bajjana Danjana Yashodanandana Bajjana Danjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tera Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari All glories of the symbol devotees, all glories of the symbol devotees, all glories of the symbol devotees, all glories of the Guru and Shri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Fourth Canto, Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 24, Chanting the Song Sung by Lord Shiva, We're in Text 1. Metre Vacha Vijitashvo Dirajasit Pritu Putra Pritu Shavaha Yaviyo Bhyod Dat Kashta Bhartri Bhyo Bhartri Vatsalaha Metra Vacha Vijitashvo Dirajasit Prito Putra Prito Shabaha Yaviyo Bhyod Dat Kashta Pratap Tribhyo Bratri Vatsalaha Metra Vacha Vijitashvo Dirajasit Prithu Putra Prithu Shvaha Yaviyo Bhyod Dakashta 
Artibyo Brartrivatsaloha Vacha, Maitreya continue to speak. Vijatashvaha of the name Vijatashva. Adiraja, Temper, Asit, became. Prithu Puttaha, the son of Maharaj Prithu. Prithushvaha, of great activities. Yaviyo Bhyaha unto the younger brothers. Adada offered. Kashta different directions. Brartri Bhyaha unto the brothers. Brartri Vatsalaha very affectionate to the brothers. Translation. The great sage Maitreya continued, Vijitashva, the eldest son of Maharaj Prithu, who had a reputation like his father's, became emperor and gave his younger brothers different directions of the world to govern, for he was very affectionate towards, toward his brothers. Purport. After describing the life and character of Maharaj Prithu in the pre previous chapter, the great sage Maitreya began to speak about the sons and grandsons in the genealogical line of the Prithu dynasty. After the death of Maharaj Prithu, his eldest son, Vijatashva, became emperor of the world. King Vijatashva was very affectionate toward his younger brothers, and therefore he wanted them to rule different directions of the world. From time immemorial, the eldest son, generally becomes king after the death of the previous king. When the Pandavas ruled the earth, Maharaj Yudhishthir, the eldest son of King Pandu, became emperor, and his younger brothers assisted him. Similarly, King Vijatashva's younger brothers were appointed to govern the different directions of the world. All right, text two. Harya Shaya Dishat Prachim Dumra Keshaya Dakshinam Pratichim Vikra Samgaya Turyam Dravini Sevibuhu. Maharaj Vitashva offered the eastern part of the world to his brother Haryaksha, the southern part to Dumra Kesha, the western part to Vrika, and the northern part to Dravina. Antardana gatim shakrao labvan tardana samgitaha apatya trayam adatta shikandinyam susamatam. Formerly, Maharaj Vitashva pleased the king of heaven, Indra, and from him received the title Antardana. His wife's name was Shikanandini. Shikanandani, and by her he begot three good sons. Purport. 
Maharaj Vitashva was known as Antardana, which means disappearance. He received this title from Indra, and it refers to the time when Indra stole Maharaj Prithu's horse, Prithu, Prithu's horse from the sacrificial arena. Indra was not visible to others when he was stealing the horse, but Maharaj Prithu's son, Vijatashva, could see him. Yet despite his knowing that Indra was taking away his father's horse, Vijatashva did not attack him. This indicates that Maharaj Vijatashva respected the right persons. Although Indra was stealing the horse from his father, Vijatashva knew perfectly well that Indra was not an ordinary thief. Since Indra was a great and powerful demigod and servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vijatashva purposely excused him due to sentiment only even though Indra was acting wrongly. Thus, Indra became very pleased with Vichitashva at that time. The demigods have the great mystic power of being able to appear and disappear according to their will. And since Indra was very pleased with Vichitashva, Vichitashva the, he bestowed this mystic power upon him. Thus, Vichitashva became known as Antardana. You know, you know one of the names of the sons of uh, Prithu Maharaj. I mean, not Prithu Maharaj, uh, Vijatashva, Pavamana, <laughs> Pavamana. We have one devotee in the uh, congregation. His name's yeah, his name's Pavamana. Uh, well, sounds good. <laughs> Pure for the mind. It doesn't say here what the what the name means, because it's in the next verse, uh, text four. Uh, so, did you know that's what I was? Did you know that's what I was referring to? Okay, yeah, Pavamana. That's, so I guess Jamal looked ahead, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Pavamana and three sons, Marsh Antardana, were named Pavaka. Pavamana and Shuchi. But, yeah, it doesn't say what it means, their, their names, but I'm sure they mean something. <laughs> we could have our Sanskrit uh, department look it up, or those with a Sanskrit dictionary, which I guess could be anyone <laughs> nowadays. Before only, you know, select people, only select people would have uh, books, actually, special books like Krishna Karnamrita. It's not that everyone had Krishna Karnamrita. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to South India, he found that book. Um, and then, or yeah, somebody had that book, and uh, he, he he had it copied. But it's not like everybody had it. <laughs> yeah, Brahma Samhita too had it copied and like that. So nowadays, of course, anybody and everybody could have any book. <laughs> That's the glory of today's age, right? Just like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he, uh, he uh, asked Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, um, I want to print the Govinda Leelam Rita, can I do that? And Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur said, okay, I'll think about it. So then, so then some time passed and he didn't get any word from his father. <laughs> So then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he came back to his father and he said, so can I print the book? Because he wanted to print it and, you know, apparently for some type of distribution. And uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, yeah, you could print one book. Uh, he said, yeah, you could, you could print it, but just one for yourself. <laughs> he didn't want it. Whereas nowadays, anybody means anybody. <laughs> They could go to uh, Loy Bazaar there in Vrindavan and you know pick it up for, right, whatever two hundred rupees or whatever it is, or look it up on the you know on their computers. Yes. Um, so Pavamana, you have. Yes. What about the mic? Just so everybody else could hear. Yeah. The one of the Sanskrit dictionaries says Pavamana can mean. Um, purification or being purified 
and another definition can mean wind or the wind god, which is makes sense, you know, of purifiers I'm the wind. Pav, pavana Pavatam, Pavana Pavatamasmi, of purifiers I'm the wind. So Pava is like almost synonymous with like or like yeah, wind and purification like synonymous. Mm. Nice. So. All right. Okay. Om Ganeshi Vinandasya Ganeshana Shalakaya Chakshula Dhamita Mina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Kritva Chalan Pangam Lange Tegri Mukhipita Maham Vande Shri Gurundini Taranam Vancha Kavadri Pishta Kripa Sundi Vibhicha Padita Nam Pavani Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namana Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pavanita Nanda Shri Advaita Gadata Shri Vasudi Gaur Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Ram, Hare Hare Yeah, and the reason why Govinda Leela and Rita Bhaktivinoda Thakur just wanted his son to to read it is because uh, I mean I haven't read it, but <laughs> I've heard that it it deals with um, with Krishna with Ra- uh, Radha Krishna's pastimes pastimes of Radha and Krishna Krishna and, spe- and specifically the eightfold uh, uh, pastimes that happen. Now, of course. Devotees should meditate on those. Ultimately, um, it was the, the but the reason why Bhakti Nautaka was saying for his son just to read it was because some of the the details in there were just pretty, um, yeah, you could say intimate with with uh, Shumati Radharani and Krishna, Shumati Radharani and Krishna. Um, so that's why he was advising just for him to read it. Uh, and and yeah, again, how nowadays anybody could pick it up. Uh, it's not like at Lloyd Bazaar they ask you, you know, the bookshop. What's that bookshop, Ross? What's that bookshop, Ross Bihari Law? Is that what it's called? The book. Yeah. It's not like you go there and you know you go get Govinda Leela Rita and you, you come up to the person who, who accepts the rupees and you go oh, here you go and, you know, he sees what book you get and then it's not that he not that he asks you like. Oh yeah, hey, by the way, how advanced are you? <laughs> or how long have you been a devotee? It's like he just says, Okay, you want that book? All right, well, you know, pay the pay the rupees. So But yeah, in general, um whatever book we may read after Srila Prabhupada's books, first it's advised we read all of Srila Prabhupada's books, and then after that we may read other books, but it should be done under the guidance of one's uh, gurus, Diksha gurus, Shiksha gurus, um, you know, like that. You, you could even ask, is it okay if I read these books? And they may say, oh, wait, wait, wait on that. Better you read this. Or, yeah, go ahead, read this. So, And then this way we're on safe grounds. So, all right, a little. Okay, so, to. <coughs> So back to the what we're <laughs> trying to be discussing. So yeah, here it's mentioning Prithu Maharaj. Yeah, Prithu Maharaj has left the scene, went back to Godhead with his good wife, uh, Archie. Archie. Their good wife wi- with his good wife Archie, or transcendental wife Archie, went back to the spiritual world, and now uh, now the son eldest son of Maharaj Prithuvijitashva, he has taken over. Qualified son has taken over. And he has also allowed his brothers or given his brothers, younger brothers, different directions of the world to govern. Um, right, eastern part was given to Haryaksha, southern part to Dumrakesh, the western part to Vrikha, and northern part to Dravina. It doesn't seem like he had a lot of sons, apparently, from these this, this description, uh, just like, or just, and also his Vijatashva himself didn't have a lot of sons. Pavaka, Pavamana, and Shuchi. Whereas you have Rishabhadev, he had a lot of sons. Does anyone remember how many sons Rishabhadev had? A hundred sons. <laughs> That's a lot of sons. And what about Duryodhana? How many sons did he have? Oh yeah, excuse me, Dhritarashtra. He also had a hundred? Ninety-nine and one daughter. Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, these 
kings, yeah, they didn't seem like they had that much in comparison. I mean, a hundred children. One devotee, namely Mukundacharna, was telling me that his grandmother had a lot of children. How many children? Sixteen children. So it's a lot of children. So means you have a lot of cut. You have a lot of cousins, right? Many cousins. So it's good. <laughs> like some 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 people, they don't have any cousins. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> Some people don't have cousins. I mean, it's nice to have cousins, you know, to hang out with growing up. And I guess, if they're good cousins. Uh, yeah, so 16. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Which, yeah, nowadays it is a lot. I mean, but just multiply that, multiply that, multiply that to 100. You know, 100 uh, children, that's a lot. That's what Shabadev had. But yeah, here it just says they had a few, or, you know, not that many. So... Uh, and Maharaj Vichitashva, it says that at one particular point he pleased Indra, the king of heaven, and therefore received the title Antardana. Uh, and and specifically in the purport to that third, uh, yeah, to the third verse, it it is explaining how um, how Indra one at a particular point he tried to disrupt, and didn't even just try to disrupt, but he disrupted, uh, or you could say, ruined or messed up uh, Maharaj Prithu's hor horse sacrifice. Ashwamedha, right? Ashwamedha. Yagya. Uh, and at that particular point, Vichitashva, he could have tried to attack Indra, but he didn't. Even though he was doing something wrong, he just didn't attack him. And in, the, in this way, Indra was pleased with his uh, behavior. So he, he 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 gave him the ability that that he had, with which that ability was was to be able to appear and disappear whenever he uh, wanted. Be pretty good, uh, <laughs> pretty good uh, power to have, huh? <laughs> Somebody comes up and and knocks on our door and. Hey, you know, it's, it's it's your turn to do this. It's your turn to do that. It's your, and the, you're laying there, and then, and then they come in, and then you hear them coming in, and then they come to look for you, and you just disappear. <laughs> oh, where do? Oh, I don't know. He's not here. So, or criminals would like that a lot, right? The the police come for them, and and then they just disappear. So, so yeah, it's quite a. And, a, and if an immoral person had that power, yeah, it'd be quite dangerous. But for a moral person to have it, I'm sure they could use it for good purposes. <clears throat> so yeah, he had that power. Uh, and yeah, about this point of of Indra making making mistakes uh, throughout the Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam. Can anybody think of any uh, other cases in which he made some mistakes? Over done. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. So Govardhan, cursed by a sage to have eyes all over his body, which disrespected his guru yeah yeah that's true disrespect of his guru any other ones there's some other ones can you think of you remember are you trying to remember <laughs> uh yeah so we have govardhan and v vijay prabhu saying disrespect to his guru one time he was cursed to have eyes all over his body, which this is the cover of this particular Bhagavatam. As you can see, a bunch of eyes all over his body. Uh, you, why. you want me to tell why? Okay. Some don't know why. Okay. So yeah, if we see here, whoops. Uh -oh. 
One second. Good point. So I can't show it. Hmm. So I was going to show the cover, but there's no cover to show. Censored. Censored, yeah. So, but on the cover, you'll see Indra praying to, I think, Vishnu, and he has eyes all over his body. And this particular... Uh, which is quite strange. I mean, he doesn't have it on his face, but he has it on all over his body. And uh, and when I, when I asked this, because I, I suspected that someone was going to bring this up, when I when I asked the question, what were his mistakes? And I, I suspected that this was going to come up. And my plan was that once this came up, uh, devotees would say in the microphone what mistakes he did. Govardhan, oh he has eye eyes all of his body, you know, like that. And once they said that he has eye all all he has eyes all over his body and if and if and if elaboration was needed, my plan was to have that particular devotee elaborate on it. <laughs> so but anyways, I guess I will. Um so yeah the reason being is because Indra, he lost control of his senses. And uh, it's it, it said that he, yeah, in terms of lust or sexual desire. And it said that he um, actually forced himself, pretty much forced himself, on to a sage's wife. Um, and that particular sage cursed him. And the curse was that that just as he forced himself on this particular uh, woman, he would have, um, I don't know, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, he would have, he would have uh, vaginas all over his body. That was the curse. And because the, uh, because, I mean, the sage maybe later thought, "Oh well, this is a pretty intense curse because oh he he begged for mercy, so uh he said, "Okay, you could have eyes all over your body. That's a little better, of course, I mean it is better, but of course everybody um everybody I'm sure you know they wonder, oh, why does he have eyes all over his body, <laughs> so just like we're you know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we, so that was a mistake he made. And now there's Govardhan. Govardhan, which, yeah, he, he wanted to kill the inhabitants of Vrindavan. He actually tried to kill them. Uh, and, yeah, and there's many cases. Also in the, in the Bhagavatam in the 10th canto, it says that Krishna came to, um, he came to, Andrew's abode, and he wanted a particular um, tree, Parijata tree, and Ender didn't want to give it to him. There's a little bit of a battle there, so there's so many uh, mistakes he made in the Bhagavatam. Uh, and yeah, so are these mistakes? Are they just pastimes? Or are they actual difficulties? Because there's a difference. Sometimes for the sake of pastimes, specifically for the sake of teaching people, uh, certain people are used as examples, even by Krishna, to, to, to teach uh, particular, yeah, to teach persons throughout the world. But some cases, they're just, they're actual difficulties, which also teach people, but they're not, you could say, divinely arranged uh, directly by Krishna. So, uh, as far as we see or understand, or yeah, as far as I've heard, that they're not pastimes in the sense that uh, there were mistakes. It, it, there were mistakes. He fell under 
the lower modes of material nature. He succumbed to certain material desires he, he had, and therefore some of these things happened that we hear throughout the Bhagavatam. And one particular one, which is very, you could say, extreme, was that he was out cursed one time to become to become a hog. Huh? Yeah, to become a hog. He was cursed to become a hog. So, which is a, I mean, Indra, you can imagine it's, it's, I mean, I don't know if we can imagine, it's inconceivable the amount of opulence and the amount of material enjoyment and the amount of wealth and the amount of, uh, just facility has to enjoy his senses. It's quite, um, yeah, it's a lot. So, and him, the king of heaven, he said the king of heaven, uh, he was cursed to become a hog, which is quite a fall. <laughs> it's quite a fall. Why? Anyone know? Anyone remember why he was cursed? Remember Vijay Prabhu? Offending his guru? Yeah, that might, yeah. That might be because he offended his guru. So, yeah, he offended his guru. He did something uh, offensive or worth cursing. <laughs> so he got cursed. Uh, and I think it was by Lord Brahma. So then he came down, he was a hog, and he was a, he was a full-on hog, I mean, uh, and he was doing what hogs do, right? Eat all types of, they eat anything, I mean, you just have a hog pen, you just throw whatever back there, and they'll just eat it, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is, they'll just eat it. And uh, very dirty, filthy, you know, rolling around in the mud, and the, you know, just filthy animal. <laughs> um, and yeah, he had his hog wife, and he had his hog lits, his you know, children around, and and he became very attached to them. He he uh, thought them, you know, very. She thought his 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 hog wife very beautiful, the children very cute. <laughs> like Bajan Ryan Swami is like, he said like at the at the Del Mar far, farm. No, not farm. D Delmar Fair, you know, sometimes, yeah, they bring out hogs there. You know, the kids go around, they look at all the animals. And and he was mentioning how, uh, particularly when these when these hogs, <coughs> I don't know if it's male or the female, but when they become attracted to each other, they're uh, squealing, you know, they squeal, you know, like the hogs squeal. And... Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, out of attraction for each other, and yeah, Bajan and some was saying, "What could they be attracted to?" I mean, you know, the, the the male hog is thinking, "Wow, look at that!" You know, look at the female hog snout. You know, that's like a really beautiful. You know, so I mean, I, I could tell you even grow. Uh, I could tell you that's not. It's, I mean, it is gross. But one devotee told me the story when he was in Europe, but. I don't know if I want to tell you, it's pretty gross. So maybe I'll tell you another time. Um, so they're, they're really gross uh, creatures. And so he became one of those. And then Brahma, he came down and he said, okay, Indra, you know, you, you've done your sentence now, now it's time to you know, go, back to the, go back to heaven to rule there. And then Indra said, oh, well, how can I leave? I mean, I have my wife, my ch how could I go? I mean... You know, I, I like it here. <laughs> Less responsibility, right? So then, at one particular point, Lord Brahma, he said, uh, he was really attached. He saw, so Indra just, and in this particular, I mean, maybe there's different versions, but I, I thought that he just annihilated his his uh, wife and children, and then and Indra just, you know, snapped out of it, and then he returned back to, to heaven. So, uh, so from this, yeah, it's definitely a, a good lesson that even if one's in a very advanced position, we're not even talking about spiritually. I mean, Indra is a devotee, and he is, uh, he's not a demon, he's a devotee. And yeah, he does have spiritual advancement, obviously. 
But just even looking at it from a material perspective, he was enjoying materially, like, uh, unbelievably. But from that, he fell down to, to the status of a hog. So, um, so, yeah, it's quite amazing how far one could fall and, and become attached to that particular position. So, and just as one could fall from the material, high material position, one could also fall from a um, high spiritual position. So what to speak of if someone is not in a high material position, and what to speak of if, if someone is not in a high spiritual position, how easy it is to fall and become attached to just this uh, horrible state of life. It's, it's very easy. And these examples uh, teach us that. Uh, with Indra, and um, just like, just like uh, my spiritual master asked Shri Prabhupada about about his disciples, um, Prabhupada's disciples. So he said, "Well, Shri Prabhupada, some a lot of there's been many cases of some of your senior disciples uh, leaving, you know, falling down from their spiritual position. Why is that?" Because, yeah, you could say the spiritual master knows, you know, what Krishna wants him to know, and at least has faith in these persons that they'll execute the orders of the spiritual master, but we see that sometimes they don't, they fail. So then Prabhupada, of course, gave an intelligent answer, and he said that the spiritual master places the disciple in the most advantageous position for devotional service. But then, while he's in that position, it's his choice. Do I want to use this for sense gratification, or do I want to use this for, or do I want to engage in, in devotional service? And sometimes they choose the other one. They go the other direction. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's there. Um, so yeah, what we learn from Indra is that one may be a devotee, and one may be advanced in many regards, but even then, um, one can have difficulty. And therefore the idea is that um, not to become too attached or over-concerned with any given devotee's uh, difficulties or faults. Uh, because after all, uh, they're not demons. <laughs> they're devotees. And they're just having a little difficulty. Um, so yeah, that's an important point to uh, to try to remember, because devotees there may be devotees situated in the mode of ignorance, as Kapila Dev says in the third canto, in the mode of passion, the mode of goodness, pure devotees. Uh, there's all different types of devotees, and sometimes they have difficulties, and therefore apichit suracchayo budgete mamananyabak that, which Prabhupada interesting enough. When, he, when describing a sadhu, <laughs> a saintly person, Sri the Prabhupada would quote this verse. It's quite interesting because you think, oh, he would quote, you know, Tatikshra, uh, Karunaka, Surida, Sarvadehinam, Ajat, right? He, 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 you think he would quote these verses where it talk about tolerance and compassion and mercy and, you know, all these qualities everybody worships. But he quotes. Um, which means a, a person engaged in devotional service let's see here the Lord says that even if a devotee commits an abominable act he should be considered a sadhu or a pious man because of his, his unflinching devotion to the Lord The devotees of the Lord never willingly commit any sinful act, but sometimes they commit something abominable due to their previous habits. Such acts should not be given, should not be taken very seriously. However, because the devotees of the Lord are very powerful, uh, yeah, because they're very powerful, whether they're on the heaven planets or this planet, if by chance they commit something abominable, it should be not, it should not be taken into account, but should be overlooked. So, and again, Prabhupada says in the purport, this is an excuse to, you know, for devotees to do anything and everything. But it's just, a, a, it's just a nice way, and it's Krishna's way, that he wants us to see things, to try to overlook any given devotee's particular uh, 
activities or faults that are against devotional service. Um, so yeah, that that's um, a very important aspect to remember for in 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 relation to seeing others, and then also relation to seeing ourselves. <laughs> I mean, uh, sometimes it's necessary to forgive ourselves as well. So yes, Indra is a devotee, and sometimes he has difficulties, but that doesn't mean he should be, yeah, disrespected or seen. Oh, you know, Indra, you know. <laughs> But, yeah, he did have some pretty severe difficulties, though. Killing the inhabitants of Rindava and so many, very severe. But still, yeah, he's a devotee, so. All right, does anybody have any uh, questions or comments? All right. Okay. All right. So, Jai. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Oh, where does he where does he refer to that? Um, yeah, I didn't say that. He, re, he he refers to that in the nectar of instruction. In a particular pur, in a particular purport that I'm forgetting right now, but uh, says yeah he says that he quotes that verse describing the sadhu apichit sadhuracharya budgete budgete mama which again. It's actually quite interesting because, you know, you could quote so many shlokas glorifying the great qualities of a devotee, but you quote this verse, oh, well, you know, sometimes it's bummer to act, but you should forgive him, over, overlook that. And why? Because he's fixed or she's fixed in devotional service and they're not giving up the process. So that's, yeah, I thought it was encouraging or interesting how Prabhupada chose that. You know, he could have chose like so many verses, you know, hundreds of verses glorifying sadhus. Which I think a lot of the times, I think, I mean, who knows, but one of the reasons why you could s logically say why Prabhupada may have uh, picked that, because, uh, yeah, a lot of the times people expect sadhus to be absolutely perfect. And if they're not absolutely perfect, then, well, they're not a sadhu. And I can't follow them. Or, yeah, I can't follow them, they're not a sadhu, you know, they're a demon even, you know, they commit some faults. Or, you know, they have to, as Tirtamaj was saying, they have to ride around on a broomstick. You know, the spiritual master has to have all these powers. But, of course, the more advanced the better, but yeah, sometimes sadhus, I mean, I think in I think in his lecture sometimes probably said it too, but I'll, I'll find that in the nectar of instruction.